Dorcas Adore, Alex Mutetti. The Attorney General is represented by Ms. Muyuki. Now, my lady, before the uh, amicus uh, makes his uh, submission, there is a point that I am compelled to raise before the court which is disappointing and ironic in the light of the submissions that were made on behalf of the petitioner. The petitioner made much of the use of social media to vilify the petitioner. And that it's singularly ironic that a tweet was drawn to my attention, which I, as a matter of courtesy, have raised with the author, one Nelson Hubby. His tweet says, Final rocket, in fact, the best thing is I've provided to you, and explained to you that I gave Mr. Harvey an opportunity to explain, and his answer was, I'm not in the habit of withdrawing my tweets. I respectfully observe that the conduct of advocates... halfway down, above the picture of the Dr. Kamin. Does the court have that? <coughs> it's Mr. Nelson Harvey's own Twitter account, and it would appear that he has nearly a quarter of a million followers. So a somewhat popular fellow, but all the more reason to be somewhat circumspect and accurate. Because, of course, one of the ills of social media is that this is available all over the world. And of course, if something's to be said, and it's to be received all over the world, it ought to be truthful, or objectively justifiable. What is said here? Final rocket landing fuel was left for Dr. Kaminwa, whatever that means, who ably tackled the DPP's Foreign Source Council. Not other than myself, but I'm pleased if that is the case. Dr. Kaminwa arrest the, addressed the now prevalent DPP's unethical conducting trial by media, mainstream and social, to vilify DCJ phenomena women through hashtags. Now, my lady, with the very greatest respect, the point that I made yesterday is exemplified by such behavior. And I simply say the following. Whatever individuals may be doing sitting at home with nothing better to do than to tweet an advocate of this court or any other court has a responsibility to behave ethically and honorably. Courting publicity for sensationalism is unacceptable all the more so for an advocate on the record in a case before the court. Now, there, mu there must come a point where the court's own process is in danger of being brought into disrepute. And I respectfully observe this is a clear example. And I say it for the following reasons. First, the petitioner has had ample opportunity to evidence <coughs> any responsibility on the part of the first respondent for social media hashtags. There is no evidence. first respondent also observes that the petitioner has had ample opportunity to identify any responsibility on the part of the first respondent for any alleged vilification of the petitioner in the mainstream media. 
There is no evidence at all. Therefore, it is galling, utterly unacceptable for an advocate in this court to make scurrilous allegations, disseminating them to more than a quarter, nearly a quarter of a million people, and then to tell me, when as a matter of courtesy I raised it with him, that he's not in the habit of withdrawing his tweets. Now, with the very gracious respect, I don't expect such breathtaking arrogance from an advocate of the High Court in any jurisdiction. What I do expect is some courtesy for all parties. I've tried my best to maintain decorum despite provocation, and I will continue to do so. But my lady, this is a matter that I invite the court to consider. There are plainly other avenues open, professional misconduct. There is also, of course, defamation, libel. These tweets are available all over the world. One would hope that Mr. Harvey will uh, curtail his desire for sensationalist publicity and perhaps demonstrate some humility and either explain to the court what the evidence is for these allegations or be contrite and apologize here and now. That's all I wanted to say. My ladies and my lords, first of all, I take profound umbrage in the manner in which uh, Mr. Qureshi has referred to me. He has referred to me as one Nelson, some fellow. My ladies and my lords, serious allegations were made at paragraph 65 and 66 of the affidavit of the petitioner. And these are the allegations that was admitted on by Dr. Kabeno. And uh, because my learned colleague did not have the time to read, perhaps I could read it for him, starting with paragraph 65. The sensational public publicization of the so-called serious economic crimes related to abuse of office, bribery, corruption, fraud, and tax evasion against myself has continued even after this court stayed my intended prosecution and has not been limited to pronouncements and publications by the mainstream media and the first respondent, i.e. the DPP. The same has been pursued in the social media in a manner that is well calculated in an orchestrated scheme that is not totally abusive and hateful but disrespectful, offensive and targeted at harassment and intended to set the public against me. And then at paragraph 66, in particular, several well-known bloggers who the first and second respondents could and should have taken criminal action against for the same targeted harassment, including but not limited to Polka Pinga, Kibet Bernard, have run two hashtags. One, hashtag step aside Mwilu, and two, hashtag step aside the wicked, Mwilu the wicked. With letters containing the forged letterhead of the judiciary, and the signature of the Chief Justice together with messages and caricatures vilifying me in a way, in a very demeaning way. And all this evidence before the court, in fact, in some of those caricatures, myself, I've been put in. And it's not so long ago, in a forum that was attended by even the President of the Republic of Kenya, where the Chief Justice lamented this habit and wondered why the DCI and the DPP have not taken action. And what answer was he given? I think everybody knows the answer. So it cannot lie in the mouth of Qureshi to come now after the petitioner has been vilified. In fact, all of us in this bench who have been vilified in the so-called judicial massage parlor. And I dare say, because I'm well knowledgeable in the matters of Twitter, I know these bloggers. Some of them are funded by the office of the DPP. 
So if he wants us to push it further, we'll push it to the very limit. Well, and let him that's know. That's a very serious allegation, and Mr. Harvey must be ready to substantiate it in court now. Yes. Before we proceed. You, you originate how proceedings, are, I'll do that. Yes, it's how we are being funded. funded. That is very really serious. So do we? Please let him finish, and we'll have a chance. And some of these tweets have been retweeted by the office of the DPP. We have them here, numbering about uh, 300 pages. So let's not kid ourselves. But more importantly, we are here for a very serious enterprise. Let them deal with the case that is before the court. And I can quote nobody but the president himself. There's freedom of the media. Let those people who are using social media use it. And in fact, the president said he wanted to bring the law to deal with this issue, but the court said no, everybody should be free to use the media. So I don't know why he wants to curtail my, my, my freedom. If he wants uh, to gain prominence on the things uh, I'm doing, Set up a Twitter account, have it verified, you'll get followers. From us. From us, you understand? So, my lady, I humbly request you dismiss the so called request for apology because I'm not going to give an apology. I'm not in the habit of withdrawing my tweets, just like Donald Trump, because it's my right to speak and I speak the truth. If they want the truth to be substantiated, let them originate a claim in libel. I will deal with it. I think Dr. Kamino has something to say on that also. Um, uh, let's leave it to the person against whom the complaint has brought up in so that we don't attribute it to Mr. Harvey, who is among the council representing the petition as concerns the ongoing in this proceedings. Certainly, the court may not be able to fully control what goes on in social media. But it must also be clarified that we cannot try this matter on social media. There is a level of decorum expected of all counsel in a matter, no matter how acrimonious the nature of litigation is, and some amount of restraint must be exercised at all times. And that is why the legal profession is referred to as a noble profession, because it frowns upon conduct which suggests disrespect and unproven claims. To this extent, we shall not hesitate to reprimand and caution Mr. Harvey to be circumspect in the manner he makes his comments and communications in the social media. That will also demonstrate respect for this court and for the profession's ethical standards, particularly with regard to the ongoing proceedings. So please take that caution, Mr. Harvey, and we shall proceed. I'm most glad, my ladies and my lady.